Hey everyone, what is going on? This is Wilson and welcome to Wilson's Thought. So today I wrote a blog post about um, tips for turning your blog readers into paying customers. You know, some of the most successful companies such as Kissmetrics, um, Unbounce, uh, a lot of these startups, they started off with just basically a blog, right? They didn't have any audience, they didn't have any paying users, but they started off with uh, a blog and they just kept writing, kept writing. And eventually they start building out the product, got user feedback, and then, you know, got paying customers. So um, I wanted to just go through the article that I wrote and kind of go through the tips. So the first thing is that uh, in order to be successful, you want to make sure that you're consistent with quality content. So you make sure you're writing really, really high quality content, right? This is very important because nobody pays for a product. Well, at least most people don't pay for a product without knowing about it. Uh, you know about what, what you guys do or your values or your customers and stuff like that so one of the most important thing when it comes down to blogging is to be consistent you know, nothing is easy so you shouldn't slack at all on this part you know set yourself a goal for example like you probably want to tell yourself uh, today um, I'm gonna be writing one article some people push it even further right you see these content sites like BuzzFeed they go for like three four sometimes even up to like 20 articles a day of course we don't want to do that because we, we want quality content so we don't want to run out ideas but set yourself a goal uh, whatever you feel comfortable with this could be daily this could be every other day but make sure you set something and make sure that you publish very high quality content right so uh, some of the things that you want to avoid is like clickbait titles, right? Right here, like clickbait headlines. Um, they work for attracting new users, but most of them will leave and not come back due to misleading headlines. So you don't want that. You don't want one of those Facebook clicks, right? You just want people that should read it, subscribe to your blog, and come back in again. So what works? You know, how-tos. How-tos work really, really well. They're pretty much actionable, you know, like step-by-step um, -step instructions on how something works. You know, example could be like, how do you get your first 10 customers, you know, or how to use SEO to, you know, build your site or something like that. And then videos. Videos tend to work really well because they're engaging with the audience. They work and um, it just doesn't require a lot of time to watch. So people like to watch it and, you know, get it over with, right? Uh, lists. This work really well. So like, you know, top 100 softwares for, for marketing companies. Something like that because people can't really find, in, find it anywhere else. Case studies work really well as well. Um, you know, these are just very high quality content that you want to publish and you want to get the user to come back. And a great way to do this is, you know, by capturing their email, uh, building up that blog list before you actually launch your product. That's super important. Uh, Groove did a very good job with this, except they didn't, um, they, they actually published this blog after they launched the product, but they pretty much journaled their entire journey about how they got the first paying customers and uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's definitely worth following. It's one of the blogs that I personally subscribe to. Um, the second tip would be, you know, engage and talk to your audience or subscribers. You know, you can be writing a new blog post every single day and trying your best to promote it, but you won't really achieve the maximum results if you don't really actually talk to your customers, right? Everyone you hear at meetups or, you know, these mentors, these successful entrepreneurs, they'll tell you, pick up the phone, talk to your customers. You know, Jason Lankin from Saster says it all the time. Pick up the phone, call your customers, and talk to them. Because it's the best way to, you know, just engage with them. If you're not, you don't have to pick up the phone and talk to every single one. But at, but in your case, you might have a list of maybe 3,000, 4,000 subscribers to your current blog. And it could be just a hobby business right now. Or you're just blogging for fun. But turn these subscribers into paying customers by just talking to them, right? Um... The best way to do it is by sending regular emails. You know, it could be very simple. Like you wrote a new blog post, send it out. Let them know that you, you wrote a new blog post. Uh, Help Scout does a really great job with this, as you can see in this picture right here. You know, uh, they sent an email saying 15 books on how to love their customers. It relates to the product. They're an expert. They're, they're a customer uh, success kind of tool. So customer service type of tool. And um, this blog post kind of re relates to what they're good at, right? So sending your audience your most recent update is a great way to attract your readers back to your blog. You know, just keeping your audience up to date isn't enough. You, know, you really have to talk to them and engage with them. Um, here's an example that I wrote right over here. Uh, so this food blogger named Lacey, uh, she runs a food blog called a Sweet Pea Chef. 
and they see spent too much time blogging about topics and writing all these contents that the readers did not really enjoy reading. And she didn't know that. She thought that was what they enjoy reading, but then she, but they actually don't, right? So that resulted in a higher bounce rate. People were leaving the site, and they just weren't coming back. They weren't subscribing, and obviously not paying for her products. So she decided to, okay, you know, I'm gonna stop guessing, and I'm actually gonna start talking to their customers and see what they really want to read. What do they want to buy? What do they want to read? You know, what do they like to hear from my blog, or what can I do to help them? And uh, she did this by simply just creating surveys and asking the audience what they want to read. You know, surveys are one of the best ways to, to just talk to your audience over email and just understand them. You can ask them any type of question. You know, don't, don't create long surveys. Learn, long surveys suck. That's the reason why we created Yes Insights because we wanted simple one-click surveys where the user doesn't have to think. They just see a survey. They want to help out. They want to contribute and leave a feedback. All they have to do is click on a button and boom, it's logged. You know, you can log in your dashboard and you can view all these results. So definitely one-click surveys is the best way to go. But anyway, so, you know, they created these surveys and because of that, they were, they were able to learn more about what their customers wanted to read. And at the same time, the email conversion rate soared. So they doubled the email subscribers as well as engagement. And that's super important, right? So people who do use one-click service tend to release or uh, receive at least 50% more response compared to like you know traditional surveys. So the third tip will be you know set up your drip emails. So another way to kind of drive more signups to uh, to your product and get them and turning them into a paying customer is by using drip emails, right? A drip email is pretty much a series of emails that your audience receives over time. These could be educational emails like a seven day free course. Uh, just make sure you're an expert in your field and make sure you're explaining your um your expertise properly. Uh, this could be like I said, this could be one of those like seven day. Learn, learn how to grow pack in seven days kind of course, or it could be uh, a drip email uh, sent out uh, right after the person signs up for a free trial for your product. So, you know, let's say you have a seven day free trial like we do at Yes Insights, then uh, every single day the, the user will receive a new email and you will try to convert them into a paying user. Of course, the end goal would be to uh, for them to either purchase your product or uh, convert into a paying user. So a great example of this is Johnny Dumas, who is a famous podcaster that runs Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, he created a, a course called Podcaster's Paradise. And during um, this, this course, he offers a free uh, introductory kind of like seven-day course to learn more about podcasting. He'll teach you how to become a better podcaster. He'll teach you all the equipments that you need, uh, the best tips in order to, you know, pretty much create your own podcast. And at the end of the course, he will offer this whole podcast um, paradise kind of package where you will be able to pay for a product that you can join the private Slack group and then view another video course. So uh, the first seven days, it would not be selling at all. All he'll be doing is giving you educational information. Uh, but then at the end of the course, he will uh, try to offer and you know close the deal. So if you're running a software product, like I said before, you can set up a, a series of onboarding or emails with Intercom. It's very easy, and you can just set it out. Uh, the the next advice I would do is um, use retargeting. So retargeting is super important, right? What retargeting does is it allows you to bring a user back to your site after they've left, and you will usually, like you always, for example, you visit like Yes Insights right now, right? YesInsights.com. And then two days later, you're surfing around on Facebook. And I don't know where you see our ad. You're like, what the hell? What's going on? You know, where's this ad coming from? And that's coming from retargeting. So um, uh, it's, it's a great way to bring people back to your blog, especially the readers uh, that kind of forgot about you. Or they clicked on a link through Facebook and they read through your article. They thought it was great, but they forgot to come back. Or they forgot your blog name. It's a great way for them to see your ads around the web, uh, Facebook and Twitter again. So um, you can set this up easily with tools like Perfect Audience, Retargeter, uh, AdRoll is another great one. Google AdWords have their own, and I think Facebook have their own right now too. So um, it's, a, it's a great way to, to kind of like pull users back. The last tip that I gave was, you know, offer, giveaway, and discounts. So, you know, everyone loves free stuff, right? One of the best ways to engage with your reader is by offering a giveaway. 
you know, from um from doing a blog post, you can offer like a special discount, for example, or or like a bundle deal. Uh, you know, AppSumo does a great job with these. Like, you know, put a bunch of different discount codes together and offers it as a deal. This is a great way to collect an email and trigger what what they call a double win. So you know, the customer wins something and you win something. So you win an email and they get a free discount. Um, it's a great way to kind of um, you know trigger things out and kind of test to see. Uh, what what your customers really want because if they if they like this type of giveaway chances are that you might be able to sell a similar product and they'll be able to buy it so you know a, a way that we did it at just insights was we would send out a survey and we'll ask them about how our service is we will want to ask for a favor and then return a favor so we return a favor by uh, you know thanking them we so we you we have a auto follow up email feature within the yes insights dashboard that you can set up with your survey and if the person, let's say, they said they love a product or, or they love using surveys and it's really helping them out, then we'll send them an automatically follow-up email and we'll say, uh, you know, here's a free discount code. Um, thanks for giving us feedback. We really appreciate it. But, you know, here's a discount code to upgrade to like an annual package, uh, something like that, right? Uh, there you have it. You know, you should be able to understand a lot more about your customers and how to kind of generate revenue from your uh, from your blog and turn it into a product. Uh, one thing is that you have to make sure that after you sell a product, you still nurture your audience, right? You still talk to them all the time. You're still trying to figure things out. That's why customer feedback is super important. You want to keep talking to them, keep understanding uh, what they want to see how else better you can make your product and what other products would they like to see, right? And you can do this by sending like an NPS survey. So uh, NPS survey is usually those one to 10 numbers that you click on in the email. It's pretty much a survey asking them how likely are they gonna you know, recommend a friend to your product. Uh, you can set that one up within Yes Insights, you know. Um, anyways, you know, thanks for listening to my talk. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Wilson Pang 8 or on Snapchat as well. And, you know, if you're looking to create one-click surveys or NPS surveys that convert or just get customer feedback in general, check out yesinsights.com.